The Marvel Cinematic Universe is a complete cultural juggernaut, and the average quality of its projects are really way higher than they have any right to be. However, while there have been a couple of hiccups over the years, there is one complete steaming turd that is a dark spot on the MCU's reputation. Of course, I'm talking about Inhumans. Now look, I understand that I am very, very late to the party in talking about this series, and honestly, I really forgot that this even happened in the first place, but the story about why Inhumans was so bad is actually really fascinating because it's mostly a lot of behind the scenes stuff that isn't really talked about a whole lot in great detail. There is plenty of backstabbing and just plain bad business decisions that really makes this, I don't know, fascinating to me at least. So here's what happened. Now, the Inhumans have been a part of the Marvel Universe for a long time, but they've never been a mainstream property. For those that aren't familiar with them, the Inhumans are a race that's descended from aliens experimenting on early humans. Once they encounter a substance called Terrigen, they develop powers and can go through changes from as little as being able to shoot fire to huge physical changes that completely transform them. Although there are a bunch of different Inhumans out there, most stories revolve around the royal family, and that's pretty much everything that you need to to know. Now, rumors about an Inhumans movie project were bubbling around 2011, and Marvel really likes to give upcoming titles a bump in the comics, which coincides really well with writer Matt Fraction being tasked with making some sweeping changes to the status quo of these characters. I swear to God, this is relevant to the TV show. Just please stick with me. Spinning out of the Infinity event, the series was going to focus on a huge paradigm shift in Inhuman culture. You see, the King of the Inhumans, Black Bolt, detonated a huge surplus of Terrigen, which started making its way across the planet, activating the dormant Inhuman genes of some ordinary folk. As Inhuman society grows, it also divides into factions, which adds to the complexity of the royal politics. Marvel's editor-in-chief Axel Alonso compared it to Game of Thrones. This makes for a very interesting premise, and would nicely set the stage for a multi multimedia adaptation, especially since Game of Thrones was huge at the time. However, Inhumans going through Terragenesis was always a voluntary choice in the comics, and with this cloud changing everyday people into Inhumans, this is starting to sound a lot like another Marvel concept the mutants. You know, a race that involuntarily gains powers, usually around puberty or through traumatic events, that can be as small as being able to shoot fire, or huge physical changes that completely transform them. And it just so happened that years ago, Marvel sold off the film rights to the mutant concept and their most famous team, the X-Men, to avoid going bankrupt. Now, let's briefly shift gears to talk about a man named Ike Perlmutter. He's a dude that I have very mixed opinions on. I mean, on the one hand, he was a very instrumental part of getting Marvel from going bankrupt to becoming a more profitable company, and he also played a huge role in the Disney acquisition of Marvel, which then made the Marvel Cinematic Universe into the huge Goliath that it is today in pop culture. But on the other hand, uh, he is just not a good person, like, at all. Ike Perlmutter is notoriously racist, sexist, and just plain difficult to work with. He was a major roadblock for movies like Black Panther and Captain Marvel getting made because he didn't think that the general public would be interested in minority-led superhero films. He's also super cheap. Like, during Civil War, Perlmutter didn't want Iron Man leading the pro-registration side because of Robert Downey Jr.'s ridiculously high salary. He instead wanted the Hulk, of all people, to be put in that role because Mark Ruffalo was significantly cheaper. Oh, and let's not forget the one-two punch of him allegedly having Terrence Howard replaced with Don Cheadle as James Rhodes because Cheadle was apparently cheaper and because Perlmutter thinks that all black people look the same. How? Well, as a businessman first and foremost, Perlmutter wasn't a big fan of advertising Marvel properties they didn't have the film rights to, most notably the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. Merchandise and comics saw a huge dip in representation of these properties, with the most blatant example being this 2016 calendar. Despite how important they are to the Marvel Universe, not a single X-Men or Fantastic Four character showed up in it, and even this iconic cover of She-Hulk threatening to tear up the reader's X-Men comics that they didn't buy her book was edited to scrub away any mention of the X-Men. It was that bad. 
but that makes for a big problem. I mean, how long could Marvel go without acknowledging the many, many, many X-Books that helped shape the Marvel Universe into what it is today? Well, to Perlmutter, the decision was simple. Just replace them with Inhumans. This stunt was pretty transparent, and was summed up nicely in an interview with legendary X-Men writer Chris Claremont. Quote, So I think the corporate publishing attitude is why would we go out of our way to promote a title that would benefit a rival corporation's films when we could take that same energy and enthusiasm and focus and do it for our own properties? Hence the rise of the Inhumans as the new equivalent to the mutants. I wish I could do something else, but it ain't my five billion dollars. The problem, though, is that on the comic side, not everybody was on the same page. When asked about the new Inhuman status quo being similar to the X-Men, Matt Fraction said, quote, The history is wildly different and the circumstances are wildly different. And with all due respect, I think the metaphor is wildly different. That's why it's not too surprising that in November of 2013, the Inhumans book was delayed with Fraction being replaced as writer by Charles Soule due to creative differences with the vision that Marvel had for the series. To add insult to injury, you know that big Terrigen cloud that's creating new Inhumans? Well, it turns out that it's toxic to mutants. It didn't used to be, but now it is. Because comics. Oh, and what was the name of the event where all of this happened? Death of X. What a perfect metaphor for the situation. Now, I'm sure that there are plenty of you guys that are thinking, okay, this is great and all, but this is supposed to be a video about the biggest swap in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I really do not care about all of this comic book crap. And I really understand where you're coming from, and we are getting to that right now, but I think setting the stage for how much Perlmutter was forcing the Inhumans to be a thing is very important to understanding why it all went wrong. So, on November 28th, 2014, Marvel announced an Inhumans movie to be released in November 2018 as a part of the MCU's third phase. Obviously, that never happened, but it's widely speculated and reported that this wasn't something that Marvel Studios wanted to work on right away, but instead, it was forced into being by Perlmutter. Not much was known about this project, other than the fact that the head of the royal family, Black Bolt, was in talks to be played by a man with a lot of experience with family, Vin Diesel. But remember earlier when I said that Perlmutter was notoriously cheap and difficult to work with? Well, he was constantly butting heads with the architect for the MCU, Kevin Feige. You see, since Perlmutter was the CEO of Marvel, Feige had to report to him, who in turn acted as the middleman with Disney. After years of conflict, Feige went straight to Disney's CEO, Bob Iger, and their studio chief, Alan Horn, and straight up threatened to quit if Perlmutter was still going to be involved in Marvel Studios. So, in August of 2015, it was announced that Marvel was going to be completely restructured, with Feige now directly reporting to Alan Horn. Unfortunately, though, this wouldn't be the end of Perlmutter's control, as he was still in charge of Marvel's TV, animation, and comics. But since he wasn't in charge of movies anymore, Perlmutter just took the Inhumans with them to the TV department. The first step would be to incorporate them into the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series by making them the central focus of the plot, even bringing characters from Charles Soule's comic series into it. Now, Marvel's TV and film departments very rarely have any crossover, so it would be a pretty huge deal to have the Inhumans start on the small screen and then graduate to the big one later. Things got even more confusing when more movies were added to Phase 3, such as Spider-Man Homecoming, which caused the release date of Inhumans to be pushed back another half a year. But the nail in the coffin would come in April of 2016, when Marvel silently removed Inhumans from their upcoming releases. A few months later, Kevin Feige commented that he was sure that an Inhumans project would eventually be coming in some capacity, but he wasn't sure how or when. He lamented that it could make for a really good film, but at that moment, it just wasn't in the car. But not too long after that interview, it was announced that the Inhumans would be turned into a TV series. Not only that, but it was also announced that Marvel was going to be teaming up with IMAX to release a special cut of the first couple of episodes in their theaters. The showrunner for this project was a man named Scott Buck. He's known for such classics as the final season of Dexter and Iron Fist. So that should tell you what to expect. Here's the thing. Buck is known for making shows very quickly and under budget, which for Ike Perlmutter made him the perfect man for the job, quality be damned. The cost cutting was apparent throughout the entire series. The costumes varied in quality, the sets of the Inhuman City of Adelan were bare bones, and there really weren't a lot of Inhumans that were shown that were more than just regular people with maybe something on their head. The CG was also really bad. I mean, I'm not an animator, so I can admit that I don't really know what I'm talking about here, but this shot of Adelan, which is supposed to be grandiose and epic, seems 
pretty lackluster. Also, let's talk about Medusa, the queen of the Inhumans. She is one of the most famous members of the royal family, and was actually the very first Inhuman character that was introduced in Marvel Comics. Her prehensile hair is legendary, with it being strong enough to take down a massive airship. So, when we got the first glimpses of the pretty god-awful looking wig, yeah, it was a letdown, but man, the CG on it wasn't the best either. Now, thankfully you won't have to see that for very long, because the main antagonist, Maximus, had her shaved at the end of the first episode. Like, dude, this was clearly a move made to cut down the cost of animation, but how can you strip away the defining characteristic of one of the most well-known characters in a series that early on? Not to mention that this character is one of the main characters of this entire series, and without her really cool hair, I don't know, there's really not much to her that we haven't seen in a million other shows. To make things worse, Marvel Comics is no stranger to bringing things from multimedia adaptations back into the comics. So at the same time as the show is coming out, Medusa had her iconic hair chopped off in the comic as well. I never thought this was a subject that I was going to be this passionate about, but here we are. Even the teleporting dog Lockjaw, who is by far the best thing about the show, was taken out of commission at the beginning of the second episode. And since the main character Black Bolt famously has to hold in his powers, then that means that there really weren't many superpowers involved in this show that's all about larger-than-life characters in insane outfits with extraordinary powers that live on the moon! The Inhumans are ridiculous and over-the-top in the very best way possible, and the TV adaptation just ended up being a bunch of talking and not very well choreographed fight scenes. I mean, sure, it's fun to see conniving Ramsey Bolton being sad that he doesn't have superpowers, and Black Bolt making this face is... Well, it's something. But all of the cool things that set this property apart from other superhero fare are either never seen or completely wiped away for cost concern. That's why it's no surprise that with all the awful company politics, rocky production history, and an emphasis on budget, that Perlmutter got exactly what he paid for. An 11% critic score and a pitiful 45% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. However, I've got a bit of an unpopular opinion. I know that I've been dunking on this show really hard, and it's universally agreed that it's bad, but honestly... I, I didn't hate it. Like, yeah, there's all of the aforementioned complaints and the fact that it felt like a really, really long, oh, I'm not from Earth and I need to find my family and go home sort of movie, with stilted dialogue, minimal character development, characters becoming friends way too quickly and for flimsy reasons, and the entire show is just a massive letdown to what the Inhumans could be, but at its worst, it's just painfully average in my opinion. Not so much bad. A couple of scenes got a chuckle out of me, the Hawaiian setting is really pretty while also setting itself apart from other locales in Marvel, and E1 Rayon actually makes for a pretty good Maximus. His entire plot is about Maximus trying to bring the city of Adelan back to Earth to liberate the oppressed Inhumans without powers that are forced to live underground because of a caste system. And since Maximus is one of these powerless folk but has some influence as a member of the royal family, it's an understandable goal to want to relocate to Earth's vast open spaces to abolish this system. Even though, in reality, it's all just a facade for him to steal power. I know that I have a really really bad habit of seeing the best in things, and I have an appreciation for what a piece of media is trying to do, even if it ends up falling flat. Sure, maybe if I wasn't watching the series to make a video on it, I would have turned it off a lot sooner. But at only eight episodes, it really didn't feel as painful to sit through as other shows that I've given the benefit of the doubt. Eight episodes... I mean, how bad can it really be when it's that little? Unfortunately for Marvel, though, most fans weren't as forgiving as me, and the special IMAX release was performing so badly that it was taken out of theaters early in order to make more room for It, which was a surprise success. With generally negative reception, it's no surprise that Inhumans was cancelled after only one season, and it's not likely that we're ever going to see it come back, because after all, Disney and Fox have now merged, which means that Marvel now has access to the X-Men, so there's no real reason to replace them with the Inhumans again. However, if there is one property in the MCU that deserves a reboot, it's definitely gotta be the Inhumans. If given a proper budget and with motivation that's outside of just let's stick it to some corporate rivals, then I really think that Inhumans could be something truly special, because this is an entire facet of the Marvel Universe that deserves to be explored, and I think if given the proper care and attention, then a lot of people could really fall in love with it. But anyway, that's all I have for today, so if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? Um, I don't have any other Inhumans videos here, so uh, 
You can always watch some of my X-Men content, like I have a playlist with all of my X-Men videos, so maybe give that a watch. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully I'll see you next time.